You've been told your whole life that everything in moderation is the key to a healthy diet. And for millions of people, that advice actually works. No. Ever wonder why some people can keep chocolate kin in their house for months, while others demolish an entire bag in one sitting despite genuinely trying to stop? Today, I'll explain why the moderation strategy fails for some people with sugar like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand whether you're fighting a willpower problem or a biology problem you didn't create. Here's what's actually happening. Moderation isn't bad advice. It's just advice that only works when your hormones are already stable. It's like telling someone to just drive carefully when their brake lines are cut. Sure, careful driving is great, but if the car can't stop when you need it to, you're not making it home safely. For people with compromised insulin sensitivity, elevated cortisol from chronic stress, or disrupted sleep patterns, even moderate sugar hits their system like a metabolic five alarm fire. Their body doesn't process that cookie the same way someone with stable blood sugar does. It triggers cravings, energy crashes, and a hormonal cascade that makes stopping at just one feel like trying to watch just one episode of a show that ends on a cliffhanger. This isn't about willpower. It's about starting from a different metabolic baseline than the people moderation actually works for. Think of it like this. Imagine two people walk into the same coffee shop. One person slept eight hours, ate a protein-rich breakfast, and has normal insulin sensitivity. The other person slept four hours, skipped breakfast, and has been running on stress and caffeine since 6 a.m. They both order the same sugary latte. For the first person, their body processes it smoothly. Blood sugar rises gently, insulin does its job, everything stabilizes. For the second person, that latte hits like a tidal wave. Their already elevated cortisol keeps blood sugar high longer. Their compromised insulin sensitivity means more sugar stays in their bloodstream. And two hours later, they're crashing hard and craving another one. Same drink, completely different biological response. Moderation assumes everyone's starting from the same place. They're not. And when you're starting from metabolic instability, that moderate treat isn't moderate at all. It's gasoline on a fire your body's already struggling to control. Here's where the science gets wild. Sleep deprivation alone can drop your insulin sensitivity by up to 30%. You're not imagining that sugar hits harder when you're tired. It literally does. Your cells become less responsive to insulin, which means more sugar stays in your blood longer, which triggers more insulin release, which eventually leads to fat storage and, surprise, more cravings later. You're not weak for wanting that afternoon cookie after a bad night's sleep. Your biology is screaming for quick energy because your metabolic machinery is running on duct tape and prayers. Meanwhile, your well-rested coworker has that same cookie and moves on with their day because their insulin sensitivity is functioning normally. This happens even after just one poor night of sleep, which means if you're consistently getting less than seven hours, you're walking around with permanently compromised sugar processing ability. It's like trying to run software designed for the latest iPhone on a phone from 2015. It technically works, but everything's slower, glitchier, and more likely to crash. Stress makes this even worse. When cortisol is chronically elevated, from work deadlines, financial pressure, relationship drama, or just doom scrolling at midnight, your blood sugar stays higher even without eating anything. Your body thinks it's preparing for an emergency, so it keeps glucose readily available for quick energy. Now add sugar on top of that. You're spiking already elevated blood sugar even higher triggering a bigger insulin response and setting yourself up for a harder crash and stronger cravings later. Studies show that people under chronic stress can experience blood sugar levels 15 to 20% higher than their baseline, even when fasting. That means before you even take a bite of anything sweet, your body's already in a pre-diabetic state just from stress alone. That moderate amount of sugar isn't moderate in context. It's fuel on an existing fire that's been burning since your alarm went off this morning. Now here's a game changer about liquid calories. When you drink sugar, soda, juice, sweetened coffee, energy drinks, those healthy smoothies with 50 grams of sugar, it bypasses your satiety signals almost entirely. Your stomach doesn't register liquid the same way it registers solid food. You can drink 400 calories of orange juice and feel just as hungry as before but eat 400 calories of actual oranges with fiber and protein, and you'll feel satisfied. It's like your body's calorie counter is glitching. The numbers go up, but the I'm full alarm never goes off. So you drink the juice, your blood sugar spikes, 
insulin floods your system, you crash later, and you're hungry again despite consuming plenty of calories. Research shows that liquid sugar can cause insulin spikes up to 40% higher than equivalent amounts of solid food sugar. That's because the liquid form hits your bloodstream faster, overwhelming your system before your body can properly respond. Moderation with liquid sugar is trying to win a game with rules that don't apply. This matters to you because you've probably been blaming yourself for years. You've tried moderation, failed, felt weak, and wondered what's wrong with you. Meanwhile, you're fighting with one hand tied behind your back because nobody told you that moderation requires a stable metabolic foundation first. You can't moderate your way out of hormonal chaos any more than you can budget your way out of poverty while your rent keeps increasing and your paycheck stays flat. The math doesn't work. The strategy assumes conditions that don't exist. And every time you fail at moderation while your hormones are unstable, you damage your self-trust a little more making the next attempt even harder, because now you're fighting biology and shame simultaneously. Here's what actually works. You stabilize first, then moderate later. Prioritize sleep. Even an extra hour makes a measurable difference in insulin sensitivity, and two extra hours can restore it almost completely. Manage stress however you can. Therapy, exercise, saying no to things, spending less time with that one friend who drains your soul. Eat protein and fiber before any sugar. It slows absorption and prevents the spike crash cycle. And avoid liquid calories entirely until your metabolism is stable. These aren't fun, sexy hacks, but they're the foundation that makes moderation possible instead of torturous. Think of it as repairing your car's brakes before attempting a cross-country road trip. Sure, you could try the trip without working brakes, but why set yourself up for disaster when you could fix the problem first? Once your hormones stabilize, something amazing happens. Moderation becomes easy. Not because you suddenly developed willpower you lacked before, but because your body stops screaming for sugar as an emergency energy source. That cookie becomes an actual choice instead of a biological imperative. Your insulin sensitivity normalizes, so the same amount of sugar that used to trigger a three-hour craving spiral now just satisfies your sweet tooth and you move on. Your cortisol levels drop, so your baseline blood sugar stays stable instead of perpetually elevated. Your brain's reward centers recalibrate because you're no longer using sugar to compensate for exhaustion and stress. It's like finally getting your brakes fixed. Suddenly, careful driving actually works because the car responds the way it's supposed to. But if you try moderation while sleep-deprived, stressed, and insulin-resistant, you're fighting biology with discipline. And biology always wins. The people telling you moderation should be easy aren't lying. They're just speaking from a different metabolic reality. Their bodies process sugar differently because their hormones are already stable. They don't experience the same insulin roller coaster, the same cortisol driven blood sugar elevation, or the same sleep deprivation induced metabolic chaos that you're dealing with. It's not fair, but it's reality. And once you understand that, you stop blaming yourself and start fixing the actual problem instead of repeatedly trying a strategy that was never going to work from your starting point. To recap, moderation with sugar only works when hormones are stable, insulin sensitivity is normal, cortisol is managed, and sleep is adequate. For people starting from compromised metabolic health, even moderate sugar triggers cravings and crashes that make stopping nearly impossible. Poor sleep drops insulin sensitivity by 30%. Chronic stress elevates baseline blood sugar by 15 to 20 percent, and liquid calories bypass satiety signals while causing insulin spikes 40 percent higher than solid food. The fix isn't eliminating sugar forever or developing superhuman willpower. It's stabilizing your metabolic foundation first through sleep, stress management, protein and fiber, and avoiding liquid sugar. Once hormones stabilize, moderation becomes genuinely easy because your body stops treating sugar like an emergency. So here's the real question. Have you been trying to moderate sugar while your hormones are in chaos? Or are you ready to fix the foundation first and discover what actual moderation feels like when your biology isn't working against you?